having held as we have in the body of the judgment, we decline to nullify the Anti-Homosexuality Act 2023 in its entirety. Neither would we grant a permanent injunction against its enforcement. We, however, at the judge section 32, two, th section 3, sub article 2 and C of the Act to violate the right to health enshrined in article 12, 1 of the ICECR, section 9 and 11, sub section 2 and D of the Act to infringe the right adequate standard of living blind in Article 25 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights and Article 11 of the ICCR, as well as the right to health and Section 14 of the Act to be inconsistent with the right to health, privacy, and freedom of religion that are respectively recognized in Article 12 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, Article 14, 1 of the ICC and Article 29, 1C of the Uganda Constitution. It will suffice to observe here that provisions of the international instruments to which Uganda is a party gain recognition in Uganda's constitutional dispensation on account of objective number 28B and national objective and directive principles of state policy and articles 45 and 287 of the Constitution. There is a straight law that costs follow the event unless a court for good reason decides otherwise. Case law abounds on the wisdom of not condemning losing parties to costs in the public interest litigation. It is abundantly clear that this petition was conversed, has conversed matters of grave national importance and immense public interest. Consequently, the circumstances of this case do not warrant the departure from the general rule on costs. Consequently, the circumstances of this case do warrant the departure from the general rule on costs. Disposition. The upshot of our judgment is that this petition substantially fails with the following orders. A. Sections 3, subsection 2C, section 9, 11.2D, and 14 of the Anti-Homosexuality Act 2023 are hereby struck down. Each party shall bear its cost. It is so. judgment shall be issued to the parties and advocates and the general public. That we came to this court with very high expectations, expecting that the judges of Uganda will stand above cultural prejudice and bigotry and make history. Unfortunately, the court in its wisdom has failed to stand beyond and above our cultural prejudices and our bigotry and has gone with the public sentiment. But what you, we have witnessed in court is what I would call a temporary reversal in an overall strategic battle or strategic war against cultural bigotry and prejudice. So we are going to appeal to the Supreme Court not for striking down different components of this law, but for overturning this law in its entirety. The judgment that was read today, I would compare to the judgment in the case of Dred Scott in 1857 in the United States. A black man went to the U.S. Supreme Court asking to be freed from slavery. The court at that time reflecting white supremacy and bigotry ruled 
that Dred Scott was a property and that under American constitution, every American citizen was entitled to a right to property. A slave was like a horse, a chair, or a goat that you owned in your house. The same Supreme Court sat 100 years later and struck down that ju its own judgment. I am hoping that it will not take Uganda 100 years to strike down Dred Scott 002, which was uh, delivered in uh, 2024. The other one was actually March 1857. This is April 2004. So I am, we are going to go to the Supreme Court and I have full, full confidence that the judges of the Supreme Court will stand above our cultural bigotry, they will stand above our prejudices, our cultural prejudices, and protect the rights of homosexuals to live their lives as they wish. Let me give an example as a journalist. I don't need to be a lawyer to say the, the law, the current law says that if you defend homosexuality, you have committed a crime. I am a journalist. So right now, under the law, I have committed a crime to say that homosexuals should be given their rights because that can be construed to be promoting homosexuality. No, 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 no. But that, that is what the court has said. So, so now, we will go to the Supreme Court and check on that. Is that really accepted? Two, to say that a human being because they are homosexual should be denied the right to housing is absurd. Can you stop heckling? You can come here and give your talk. Stop heckling. So, please be civilized, but you are much, you are, you are much better than that. Yes, so, so I was saying that we will go to the Supreme Court because I have faith that the Supreme Court of Uganda cannot say that in a debate on sexuality, only one view is constitutional, the view of saying homosexuals are evil and should be hanged. That anyone who says that the human beings whose rights should be respected is committing a crime. The second thing, I was so shocked that the, the Constitutional Court of Uganda, the judges, said that this law was made to protect children. In the 2002 police report, there were 13,000 cases of child abuse reported in Uganda. 13,000. Only 300 were of men molesting boys. 12,700 were of men molesting little girls. If our parliament is serious ab ab about protecting children, we need to protect 98% of the girls who are being violated by heterosexual men. Even before we think of the two, even though we must think also about the 2% who are violated by homosexual men. So the biggest scourge of child abuse in Uganda is not homosexuality, it is actually heterosexuality. The second thing... What do you, what do you comment on the pastor? Le, 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 let me come to the second point I was making. The second point which I found absurd is that the Constitutional Court of Uganda, led by one of the greatest legal minds, Richard Butera, with my friend Gash on that court, with Kiria Wiri, whom I saw there, that they could make a judgment that there is recruitment in schools. This country, let me tell you, has ISO, has ESO, has CMI, has Police Special Branch, has Crime Special Intelligence, has uh, uh, CID. It has all arms. Even State House has its own intelligence organization. Not once has one human being been arrested for recruiting children into homosexuality. This was a court judging on the basis of prejudice and ignorance. If there was a massive campaign to recruit children in schools into homosexuality, how come we have not had one person, one human being, arrested, paraded before the courts or before the press for this recruitment? How can recruitment have been taking place for the last 17 years? and not a single person has been shown so. So I was so shocked that our judges could judge that way. I don't know the reasons they did so, but I'm really disappointed. So because of these reasons, we shall go to the Supreme Court and challenge this law. We will even challenge it in the highest court on our, or in the universe, that is before God. Now, folks, if you have something to say. Some before you. That it is legal to exclude the LGBTI community 
from participating in the affairs of their country, simply on the basis of public sentiments and alleged cultural values. I think it's sad uh, that the court could play to public sentiments and not apply the law. To that extent, I think the court is wrong, because the simple question before the court was whether the equal protection of law under our constitution extends to every single Ugandan, regardless of whether we like them or we don't like them. And I think in that, ex in that regard, the court, I think, let us down and failed to protect a section of our community. In terms of the next...